So over here on the NA version of the game, we finally have the return of the sussiest character in all of Fate Grand Order. Yes, we are talking about the one, the only, the boy Merlin. And this has been a topic of discussion for a lot of people in the community as to whether or not they want to summon on Merlin because on the one hand, he's a very, very strong servant, still one of the better support type servants in the game, even on JPFGO right now. But on the other hand, Castoria is going to be coming out in like a month and a half at the latest, and she is the best support type servant in the game. And it's probably one of the best servants you could put onto your account with like the most impact to what she brings to the table. So it's this constant debate of like, well, you should still like maybe summon for Merlin, but do you have enough Saint Quartz to spare for him? It's a very slippery slope to be kind of walking on right now. Because even yesterday, which if you're not following my Twitch down in the description down below, what are you doing? I did a little bonus stream for you boys yesterday and one of the things that we were talking about were some of the team comps you could also fit merlin into with castoria because that's what also makes this really hard is that not only is merlin a good support type servant and yes while castoria may be better merlin does have direct synergy with her because we kind of all found out that everything merlin does pretty much any team comp appreciates the only thing that's not quote unquote generic is the buster buff on his third skill but everything else pretty much any other team comp would like to have. So let's go ahead and talk about the boy Merlin, starting off with his hits, which you have standard support type caster stuff going on here. He's got a triple arch deck to help him reach his own NP faster, help him arch chain with the other support type caster so everybody can reach their NP just that much faster. Although Merlin in particular, the reason he has the triple arch deck as well is because he's supposed to be paired with buster servants who traditionally are only going to have one to two arts cards so him flooding your deck with arts cards is supposed to help you get those arch chains a bit more consistently so it's also nice if you're going to use him for his original quote-unquote intended purpose of pairing him with buster servants because then you know he can use that arts deck to actually help them get their own arch chains a bit more consistently and thus fire their np a bit more frequently one of the nice things about Merlin I personally love is that he's got that six hit extra attack. You guys know that the five hit extra attack is the gold standard and going above that, it shows that you're a cut above the rest. If you're not aware, the extra attack is a composite card that gen stars NP and does big boy damage. And with Merlin's naturally high 0.81% NP gain, if you are getting a brave chain with Merlin, which you think you wouldn't be doing all that often, because Merlin's a support type and you don't want to do just brave chains with him. You want to kind of incorporate everybody else in the party. But it's surprising how often you do the brave chains with Merlin. It is nice that his extra attack is actually pretty good and it could take advantage of that very high natural NP gain. And his decent star gen at 10.8%. But you guys aren't here for me to, you know, start deconstructing all of his hits and everything. That doesn't really matter. He's a support type servant. So what really matters for this servant are the skills and the NP. Real quick though, before we actually move on, I do actually want to mention that his passive skill is really, really strong, specifically the mixed blood passive skill that gives him a passive 5% every single turn. This really makes sure that your Merlin is always staying topped off, because if you guys remember, Merlin's NP will also give you passive NP, and this adds an additional 5% to that just for Merlin himself. So it really helps your Merlin to get to their NP that much faster and that much more consistently. But let's go ahead and start moving on to his skills. So starting off with skill one, we have Merlin's Charisma. And I know what people are going to say. It's literally just a Powercraft version of Castoria's skill. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, this skill gives you 20% attack for three turns and charges the entire party's NP gauge by 20% on a five turn cooldown. This in and of itself is a very, very strong skill. We are just spoiled because Castoria literally does the exact same thing, except she charges the party's NP gauge by 30%. I don't know why they felt like she just had to do Merlin up like that. I don't know why they had to disrespect my mans like this, but this is still a very, very good charisma. As I was saying, this does fit into generic team comps because most team comps are going to want an attack buff and most team comps are going to want that additional 20% NP. It is still a very, very good charisma to this day. It's just, again, kind of unfortunate that Castoria power crept it a little bit, but it's still very, very strong. Pretty much gets you going with whatever DPS servant you're wanting to use as you're going to be giving them that little bit of NP and that decent attack buff that can double buff with any of their other skills that they might have. Because if you guys don't know, 
different buff types in FGO actually multiply into each other. So say you have two attack buffs, 20% and 20%, those add into each other for 40%, but let's say you have a 20% attack buff and a 20% NP damage buff, since those are different buff types, they multiply into each other. And that is gonna be important whenever we get to skill three. But first we gotta talk about skill two, which pretty much like no one has really power crept this skill on Merlin yet, at least not to my knowledge, because this is still one of the most broken defensive skills in the game. Sure, you do have like Castoria's solemn defense and whatnot, where she could protect the entire party for like whatever hits her overcharge has, right? But this is an AoE party-wide invincibility for the whole turn on a skill, meaning you pretty much have access to it whenever you want. You don't even have to get to your NP. It's just whenever you're in danger, you pop skill to bam, the entire party is protected save for the enemy having some form of buff removal or having pierce invincibility themselves. But in like 90% of situations, this is going to keep you around. And it's one of, again, the most broken defensive skills in the game because you just protect the entire party for the entire turn. No hits, no nothing, no strings attached. Because even someone like Miss Crane, who's a more recent servant, she kind of has this skill, except she doesn't protect herself and she's the support type servant, right? Granted, in Miss Crane's case, she does kind of want to dip out a little bit, but still odd that she can't protect herself with her defensive skills. So it's like, this skill is still holding up to this day, and that's not all that it does. It actually also buffs the entire party's crit star generation rate by 50% for one turn. The intended use is that you use this with like buster servants like Iskandar, Emiya, Raiko that have high hit NPs and you use that to make their own NPs giant star bombs. But then when you start seeing Merlin being put into like different team compositions with quick servants, with art servants, it actually is really good with them as well because the quick servants will take that if they're not a particularly good star gen, which if you're a quick servant and not a good star gen, it probably means you're not doing too well at life, but Merlin's gonna slap that band-aid on you to make sure your star gen is back up to par. And then if you're an art servant, you literally don't have a capacity to gen stars, at least not naturally. And so then Merlin is at least giving you a chance to gen a bit of stars and, you know, kind of help you out with whatever crit niche you got going. And then finally, you guys know that we all love it but we all hate it. He also reduces all enemies critical attack chance by 20% for three turns. This is just one of those things that servants do that we are just like, don't really care about, but it's really important to have because once you start getting to like 1.5 in the story, that's when enemies just start be going like ham Tara with the crits. Like they just want to obliterate you into the ground. Like you don't just got to worry about the NP. Now you got to worry about their normal attacks because they might crit you for like 25,000 damage and just obliterate you outright. So it's very good that they tack this on this. And I think this is how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to tack it on to your defensive skills as an added effect. There's some really old skills still that are just like, yeah, my skill is that I reduce the enemy's critical attack chance by 30% for three turns. And it's like, nobody cares. But the fact that Merlin can do this on top of also having the AoE nope skill and has a little bit of utility by buffing the party's crit star generation rate makes it a very, very solid skill. But then let's talk about it. Let's move over to skill three. This is what pretty much broke the game for the longest time, pretty much until Scotty came out. Because if you wanted to do the damage, as we'll call it, you would use double Merlin specifically for hero creation because this skill, I mean, even to this day is capable of letting you do insane amounts of damage because it gives one ally a 50% buster buff for three turns. That is a buster mana burst that is usually reserved to only being used for one turn being put on a three turn clock, which is insane. It buffs their max HP by 3k for three turns. And if you're using double Merlin, that is a 6k max HP buff, meaning that ally is going to be quite the chunky lad. But then the real star is that he buffs their crit damage by 100% for one turn on a six turn cooldown. Meaning if you had crits ready, you would pop this skill and God forbid they were buster crits, but even if they were arts cards, quick cards, with double Merlin, you gave him 200% crit damage. There was not a whole lot that was going to survive that absolute onslaught. And this is also why Merlin could be used in generic team comps because he gives that massive crit damage for that one turn. So even if you're not a buster servant, even if you only got the one buster card, you can still take advantage of becoming a bit of a thick boy with the max HP and you can take that crit damage buff 
and just slam the enemies with some arts or quick crits. It makes him very, very good for generic comps and very, very good if you're gonna use him with Buster Servants. But then finally, there's probably one of the best NPs in the entirety of the game's history. Merlin's NP, Garden of Avalon, gives you three generic things that literally every party could ever want. He gives you 1000 HP every single turn for five turns, 5% 5 NP every turn for five turns, and five crit stars every turn for five turns. And these do stack, it is quite easy to stack this as Merlin has a very high NP gain rate, has a triple arts deck, especially with other support type casters that are also just throwing NP around the party like say Castoria, who gives the entire party 30% and buffs the entire party's NP gain as well, making it easier to reach your NP. It means you can stack this consistently about two times, meaning at the worst, if you have an NP1 Merlin and you're only getting overcharge one, that is still 2k every turn, 10% NP every turn, and 10 stars every turn just from one servant. God forbid you have this guy at like NP5 and you're stacking like 4k HP every turn and you got him to like overcharge two and he's got like 20 stars in rotation. That man is just double the strength of a maximum broken 2030, which is absolutely insane. And this is why Merlin is one of those servants that people are like, should I summon for Merlin? Because as I'm detailing, this guy is really, really insane. This sounds good even to this day. I mean, I don't want to poke fun at my boy Constantine. I think he's good. But imagine that if instead Constantine dropped, right? Because he's the most recent JP servant. Imagine Merlin dropped, right? Like Merlin dropped as a new release. We would still be like, this guy is nutty, broken, insane. He's a must summon. You gotta get this guy which is why it's really hard for me to tell people, yeah, don't summon for Merlin, don't summon for him. Because I know he's really good. I've personally used team compositions where it's like Castoria, Morgan, and Merlin, and that is like not only an undying team, but it also just does a lot of damage because then at that point you have like perfect synergy between everything that Merlin's doing and Morgan being a buster servant, and then Castoria just functionally keeping the entire team alive with her broken NP and her very solid third skill, especially if you want to do some boss killing with that Threat Against Humanity special damage mod. And it just makes it really hard for me to say don't summon for Merlin, right? Because he's only available as this video is going up today, Sunday, and then I believe next Sunday as well. But that's not a lot of chances to get the guy. Only Sundays during the period of the event, I mean, that's not a whole lot of chances to get the guy. And so it might fill you with that like false sense of like, oh, I'm not going to have a chance to get him. But if you don't have the Saint Quartz to get him right now, don't freak out. He'll still be around next Sunday. Maybe you could summon for him then. But I do think that at the very least, this is a servant that everybody should at least do a multi for. Because having Merlin in your box is just a very impactful thing to have. It's just really, really good to have a Merlin on standby that is your own. So is he worth rolling for? Most definitely. Merlin's absolutely broken. I mean, still one of the best support type servants in the game and probably will still be one of the best support type servants in the game for quite a while. Can't wait for them to buff this dude. Let's see what happens with that. The only thing I'm really asking if they ever buff him is either like maybe buff the NP so it just has higher values off rip because that would be disgustingly broken and I'm all for it or just buff the third skill to give it like 100% crit damage for three turns. So we could just absolutely decimate the game again, bring in the new era of Merlin. Again, I'm all for it, but let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. With all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace, late guys.